Chapter 20 of The Greatest Lie on Earth Proof That Our World Is Not a Moving Globe by Edward Hendry Scientific Proof The Earth Does Not Move Many attempts were made to prove that heliocentricity was true and geocentricity was false. Every such attempt has been a failure. The most famous, because of its precision and irrefutability, was the experiment done by physicist A. A. Mitchelson, 1852-1931, through 1931, and chemist E. W. Morley, 1838-1931. Through 1923. The Mitchelson Morley experiment, using an interferometer which measured light rays, established that the Earth is stationary. Mitchelson was involved in other experiments that confirmed, to his dismay, that the Earth is stationary. The Mitchelson-Morley experiment, 1887, does not stand alone. It is joined in its confirmation of a stationary Earth by the James Bradley experiment, 1729, proving that the ether is not carried along by the Earth, the Sagnac experiment, 1913, proving that there was in fact an ether, the Mitchelson-Gale experiment, 1925, proving that the ether passed over the Earth once every 24 hours, and Aries failure, 1871, proving that the stars moved, carried by the ether, while the Earth remained stationary. There are many other experiments that have each time given results that were not only consistent with a stationary Earth, but indicative of a stationary Earth. From the light polarization experiments of E. Muscart in 1872 to the mutual inductance experiments of Theodore de Coudres in 1889 to the 1903 Teuton Noble experiments. Indeed, there is not a single experiment that proves that the Earth moves. The moving Earth is based entirely on a theory and is contradicted by all of the experimental evidence. The Sagnac experiment, proving the existence of ether, destroys the theory of relativity, which necessarily assumes that there is no ether. The Mitchelson-Gale experiment proved that the ether passed over the Earth once every 24 hours, but it did not prove whether it was the ether moving or the Earth spinning. Aries' failure determined with scientific certainty that in fact it was the ether carrying the stars that was moving over the earth and that the earth was stationary. Dr. Navel Thomas Jones, Ph.D., explains that George Airy proved that the world was stationary and the stars are moving. Because his experiment proved that the earth does not move, which was the opposite of the expected outcome, Aries' experiment is commonly known as Aries' failure. There has been a virtual blackout, however, within science education of these experiments. Dr. Malcolm Bowden reveals that he asked three Christian physicists if they had ever heard of them. Not one had. Indeed, in March 2005, another physicist wrote to Dr. Bowden that, 
quote, after 35 years as a professional physicist with a thesis in relativity, I only learned of Sagnac's experiment last year, close quote. The degree of the cover-up of true science is simply astounding. The Mitchelson-Morley experiment was simple in concept. A light beam was split. One of the split beams was sent at a right angle to the Earth's supposed direction of travel, and the other was sent along the path of the Earth's supposed direction of travel. The light traveling in the direction of the Earth's travel should have taken longer than the light traveling at right angles to the Earth's direction of travel. To the amazement of the scientific world, the results were null, meaning that there was no difference in the speed of the light beams. That meant that the Earth was motionless. The Mitchelson-Morley experiment shook the scientific world. The implications were devastating for the Copernican model of a globular, spinning Earth orbiting around the Sun. If the heliocentric model fell, then evolution would not be far behind. The priests of science knew that something had to be done if they were going to maintain their godless religion. In desperation, the priests of science tried to explain away the null result of the Mitchelson-Morley experiment. Hendrik A. Lorenz and George Fitzgerald swallowed their pride and put their formerly good names to a ridiculous theory that the null result in the Mitchelson-Morley experiment was because the solid steel arm that was pointed in the direction of the supposed motion of the Earth became shorter due to the Earth's movement through the ether. That shortening of the steel caused the light to arrive at the same time, not because the Earth was stationary, but because the Earth was moving Seriously, I'm not making this up. This supposed contraction became known as the Lorentz Fitzgerald contraction. There was absolutely no evidence to support the theory of the Lorentz Fitzgerald contraction, but it was all they had to try to keep the spinning and orbiting Earth model of heliocentricity alive. They only came up with the theory of the Lorentz Fitzgerald contraction because they had nothing else to explain the null result and they were not going to abandon the Copernican model. Some scientists aver that it is a misnomer to call the Lorentz Fitzgerald theory a contraction since as first theorized it was supposedly the transverse arm of the Mitchelson-Morley interferometer that was lengthened, so it should actually be called the Lorentz Fitzgerald expansion. Regardless, if it was called an expansion or a contraction, it was an inane theory that was unsupported by any proof. Arthur Miller described the Lorentz Fitzgerald contraction as physics of desperation. Indeed, it was more akin to a fairy tale for adults than it was science. It was not long before Einstein was pressed into service with his theory of relativity. Notice that the scientific community rejected acceptance of a stationary earth not because there was any scientific evidence that contradicted it, but because it had become the central faith of the godless scientific community. The Copernican theory was simply not to be abandoned, 
no matter what the scientific evidence showed.